So, hello. So, I talk about uh, gamification for Ruby standard library in uh, Ruby 2.5 and Ruby 3. So, uh, into the, my introducing. So, I'm a team member of the Ruby language. So, I maintain around the standard libraries and the tool trains in Ruby language. So, also, I maintain an official site called RubyLang.org. This site built by Helloc and AWS and Fastly and other compute and network resources. So I operate all of this site. So, and also may I maintain our Rake and the Ruby James and the Arduk and the Psych and the other stuff. So, also I'm a member of uh, Asakusa RV. So Asakusa RV is a meetup around the Kanda and the Akihabara in Tokyo, Japan. So we chat about our programming every Tuesday. So if you come to Tokyo, Japan, please join our meetup. So mention to our me or Matsuda, Akira Matsuda-san, please join me. So, and uh, I introduced our Ruby language sponsors. So we have a lot of sponsors for development Ruby language. So these are Helloc and Fastly and LSEA Microsoft. So Helloc provides uh, unlimited dynamic resources for our website, so named RubyLang.org. So Fastly provides a uh, CDN free plan for our website. So NSCA provides a uh, network and computer resources for package distribution, like a tower. So Microsoft provides a uh, Azure environment. So we can support Windows environment with these resources and license. So thank you, Herc, and Fastly, and NSEA, and Microsoft. So, and we got uh, these sponsors, uh, Ruby Association in Japan, and Nihon Ruby no Kai, and the Sugai Research Laboratory, Ibaragi University. So Ruby Association provides a grant money for our AWS infrastructure. And the Nihon Ruby on Kai and the Sugai Research Laboratory provides a Mac OS server resources. So we can support a Mac OS continuously used by these sponsors. Thank you, Ruby Association and the Nihon Ruby no Kai and the Sugai Research Laboratory. Thank you. So I will start talking about today's Demo. First, so I will introduce the background that the gamification project. So what's a standard library? So the standard library is a library that uh, installed together with the Ruby interpreter, when install Ruby. It needs to require different from embedded libraries like a string and the thread and other stuff. So, and you can use a standard library without a bundler and Ruby gems. So standard library are written in two languages. First one is a pure Ruby. Second one is a C. So there are three types of standard libraries. There are called standard library and default gems and bundled gems. I'm going to describe these in details later. The status of the current stable version, the Ruby 2.4, so we have over the 80 libraries, uh, standard libraries. Default gems and bundled gems are only 13 libraries. So 80% of Ruby's library are standard libraries. The term of standard libraries means all libraries, but it is also a subset. So standard library is not a good name, but this is what we call it today, standard library. So where I will introduce, there are differences in the Ruby language. In standard library, their upstream is svn.rubylang.org, same as the Ruby languages. 
So we use subversion for development in standard library. The recycle is also the same as the Ruby interpreter every year. Next one is the default jam. This is a somewhat different from the standard library. Development upstream is a Ruby organization on GitHub or Ruby core repository. This recycle is the same timing as a Ruby interpreter or the, uh, the maintenance conveyance. Finally, bundle gems. So these are not developed in the Ruby core repository. All of the bundle gems are developed on GitHub. And the risk management is not done by the Ruby core team. These are trend of the number of standard libraries of Ruby languages. So in Ruby 2.4, uh, 105 libraries, nearly all are standard libraries. However, in Ruby 2.5, uh, 14 libraries are going to be uh, default gems. And the ratio of standard library is about to cut off less than 80%. So let's talk about the default gems. And did you know the default gems? Please raise up. Only one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the difference between default gems and the standard library is only that default gems have a gem spec file. The Ruby language installer copies the gem spec or default gem to a specification directory. However, the default gem library files are located the same location as the standard libraries. They are not in our gem structure. So you can not uninstall default gems using the gem command, like a gem uninstall. This default gem is also raised on rubygems.org as a regular gem using this gem spec file. Moreover, you can determine default gems use the these Ruby code, these Ruby code. So gem dot raw data spec, uh, open SSL, and method called default gem. If uh, open SSL is default gem, returns a true. Here are some typical examples of default gems. One is a open SSL, Ruby slash open SSL. So OpenSSL gem is the most successful example with uh, default gems. OpenSSL initially started as a standard library in June 2017, this year. This upstream was changed to GitHub from the Ruby repository and became independent from the Ruby language release cycle. OpenSSL gem added a new feature and fixed many bugs. You can use uh, new features and uh, stable version of OpenSSL library by using the gem installation. You can install via the gem install OpenSSL command. So we can use part of the new feature of Ruby 2.5 on Ruby 2.3 and Ruby 2.4 by installing these gems. Other benefits are security fixes. So Ruby core team has not secured the XPAT. So all vulnerability reports are handled voluntary work. If a security problem happened, the maintainer of the stable version of Ruby release, stable version of Ruby releases a new version of Ruby. The release work of Ruby language is a very, very hard work. But by using the mechanism of default gems, we can release default gems independently, independently on Ruby gems without releasing Ruby languages. So you can fix vulnerability and override the standard library using default gems. So you don't need to upgrade a new version of Ruby languages for fixing a vulnerability. So the next example of Psyche and Arlock. So the upstream 
repository of Slack and Rdoc are also moved to the Ruby organization on GitHub. So we accept pull request and mod feature for these default gems on GitHub. So you can use GitHub style development for default gems used by pull request. So I merge these changes into Ruby core repository simultaneously, and so we can involve more people to Ruby language development through the default gems. Next half is bundled gems. So bundled gems are entirely different from the default gems. It has difference of direct structure from Ruby's standard library. In Ruby core repository, we unpacked gem file of bundled gems and the gem folder, the Ruby package. Moreover, Ruby installer installed them to your environment. In other words, this bundled gem is a normal gem that was installed at the same time as installed Ruby language. So uninstalling bundled gem is also possible you can install bundled gems. It's different from our default gems. So you can see a list of bundled gems in gems slash bundled gems file on the Ruby repository. So there are the latest list of bundled gems in Ruby 2.5. So you can use these gems when installing Ruby language version of Ruby 2.5. So these gems are installed at the same time as when you install new version of Ruby. So there are test unit and main test and rake and did you mean and other stuff. So bundle gem is a better solution for library distribution without a network installation of Ruby gems. However, there are some problem. The first problem is that bundled gems cannot use C extensions. This is necessary to ensure cross-compiled binary support by installing the Ruby languages. So we need to add support, a cross-compilation feature to our Ruby gems. So we are working now. So the second problem is uh, there is no mechanism to guarantee it works with the head version of Ruby languages and the Ruby interpreter every day. So I created an experiment implementation called a test bundles gems task. This task invokes test suite of bundles gems running with a development version of Ruby interpreter. So I try to integrate this task to our CI now. So we can guarantee to work a bundle, all of bundled gems with a development version of Ruby interpreter every day. So I talk about uh, what gamification. So the original proposal was issued six years ago. Currently, we can get a standard library like NetTerranet, at rake and uh, mini test and the test unit and the other stuff via bundled gems. So these can be released independently of the Ruby release cycle. So we changed the standard library to our normal or regular gems and use default gems and bundled gems mechanism. So I called this promoted for the, to the gemification. So this is a benefit summary of default gems and bundle gems. Again, so gemification provides advantage to Ruby developers and Ruby users. So a first thing, uh, it targets uh, fixing a security vulnerability. So we can install safe version without uh, upgrading Ruby languages. An uh, example is uh, OpenSSL and the Psych gems. So secondary, so you can use new feature and bug fix of the latest release version of Ruby languages. 
on past stable version, like uh, Ruby 2.3 or Ruby 2.4. For example, so Roga library, Roga, Roga library has not been released as a gem yet. But if Roga gem was released, released you, we could use a new feature like a merge process logging with uh, Ruby 2.3 or Ruby 2.4. It's an example. So sadly, uh, default gems and bundle gems use uh, GitHub and uh, its workflow. Developer can quickly send a patch to default gems and bundle gems by pull request. Uh, finally, uh, I believe that gemification make it possible to, for a Ruby interpreter developer like uh, Nobu and Koichi-san uh, interest to focus on Ruby internal without uh, standard libraries. So however, there are some problems with gemification. For example, there are dependency problems with uh, Ruby gems and bundler. I'll talk about this problem later. Uh, next one is a uh, duplication of maintenance code base. So library, so standard library maintenance needs to support GitHub repository and Ruby core repository uh, used subversion. So both until are changing up story. Other cons is maintenance policy. So when you can use default gem with a several version of Ruby, include our Ruby 2.3 and Ruby 2.4, the maintenance should support all of version before all of versions. Before, before the gamification, maintenance only supports the latest version of Ruby interpreter. So it increases the support cost to our library maintenance. So for example, so Ruby gems still support Ruby 1.8. It's a rarity. So when you try to make change Ruby gems, you need to write code that works even with a Ruby 1.8 in 2017. <laughs> also, so this is a very, very hard work. Uh, it's a echo the commits. So Ruby 1.8 cannot use our uh, temp file calls exclamation method. So we need to uh, detect, uh, use the respond to method. So I introduced the progress of Ruby 2.5 of the gamification project. So first of all, uh, I explain a uh, repository of Ruby gems. So Ruby gems slash Ruby gems org is Ray's application that runs as a RubyGems site. So RubyGems org is a different team from a CLI and library team. So RubyGems slash RubyGems is a command line tool of RubyGems. Now Samuel and I maintain our RubyGems library and I merge or backport into the Ruby core repository from our RubyGems slash RubyGems repository. So there is how things to advance the gamification project and the Ruby gems. So some of the name of standard library were reserved on the Ruby gems org. For example, so you create a storing gem and push it into a Ruby gems org, but you cannot push it. So Ruby gems org has a reserved word list same as the standard libraries. You can check this list on our RubyGems org repository, like this, uh, lib slash patent rv. So there was a significant problem here in the spring in this year. Because this is a world backlist started after the initial release of our RubyGems org. So some gem, some RubyGem that was the same name of a standard library was registered. In this spring, it was not possible to push, but it was able to install. 
uh, it's a first example. So five utils, so which is one of them registered as a gem. So this gem handles file formats, such as uh, Excel and Office format. So it is a completely different feature library from our file utils of standard library on um, Ruby language. When you add it to file utils into your gem file and uh, install it, so you can see your Ruby environment is broken. I found this program while gemification project. At first, I couldn't infrastructure team or RubyGems org. I got to transfer to the namespace of a standard library because an owner of file utils has no activity now. After that, I pushed the implementation of the standard library of Ruby. So you can, you, you are, you are live from this problem with a file utils now. So in the case of file utils, I got the approval of namespace transfer from our RubyGems org infrastructure team without a contact, contacting the namespace folder. But in the case of Fedor, it was still maintained by a valid user account. So I contacted him first and talked about a gamification project. Finally, I got a namespace of Fedor and overwrite it by an implementation of Fedor, which exists as a Ruby's standard library. The Next example is a ZDBM. This is a fusion, this is a complicated problem. So it was the same feature of the standard library named the ZDBM, same feature. Only difference was that it uses libffy. Standard library, ZDBM of standard library didn't use our libffy. So I am also spoke about the gamification project to the owner of GDBM gem. After that, I got the namespace of GDBM and overwrote with the implementation of standard library. So gamification project involves a team of RubyGems, RubyGems infrastructure gem, and collaborate with the many owners of existing gems. I have done transferring namespace and uh, preparing gem release and remove a uh, gem name from the Ruby reserved list on RubyGems.org. And uh, finally, uh, I zip it and between this spring and the summer. It is uh, my work in this year. So this is a list of default gems on Ruby 2.5 targeted to release at the December 25th, Christmas Day. So when the gem list command is invoked, it shows a list of installed gems like this. So you can see default storing on this result. These, these are default gems. You can see these results at the end of the year. I have advanced plan to promote these standard library to default gems in 2018, uh, like uh, Matrix and the Digest and the uh, OpenStack and the String IO, Roga and uh, other stuff. Maybe you can install this library as default gems on Ruby 2.4 or Ruby 2.5 on the next year. So finally, I introduced plan or the uh, gamification for Ruby 3. So this is my roadmap of Ruby 3. So however, I didn't get approval from Matt yet. So in Ruby 2.5, so I bundled Bundler as a default gem. 
So you can use bundle command without a gem installation via the gem install bundler. I believe we have helped to quickly set up your Ruby environment. So next target on our Ruby gems three. So integrate the Ruby gems and bundler. Moreover, I promote all of the standard library to the default gems. I hope to separate our recycle and responsibility from the Ruby core theme. Finally, uh, my goal is promoting all of the library to bundle gems without a dependency of Ruby gems and bundler. So we need to remain a dependency library of Ruby gems and bundler to default gems. So I describe the bundle bundle feature. So we have a big issue with this feature. So its issue was that bundle's test suite is RSpec. So Ruby core repository could not support to invoke RSpec test suite. It only supports test unit and me test. So I make a test task for a bundler named the test bundler task, use non-installation non Ruby interpreter in Ruby core repository. So Ruby core team confirms to run bundler on development version of Ruby interpreter, like a Ruby 2.5 or Ruby 2.6 and the Ruby 3. So you can get an improvement of bundler as standard library developed by the Ruby core team. So in Ruby Gems 2.7, it installed the vendor bundle and partly share bundle feature on Ruby Gems. So test code of Ruby Gems 2.7 load to bundle feature. So we work towards a Ruby Gems 3, which integrates a bundle feature. So therefore, in Ruby 3, so we can use a Ruby Gems 3 and the Bandra 3, so we got our Ruby 3 by 3 by 3. So I believe that the Bandra Bandra feature helps this integration strategy, I believe. So however, there is one big problem to our gemification and the Ruby Gems and Bandra. So we cannot determine any version on the files if it was dependency of Ruby James or Bandra. So this is an example of this problem. So Ruby James wrote the latest version like uh, 2.0.5 OpenSSL gem. So but we hope to use an old version of OpenSSL like uh, 2.0.4 but but uh, Ruby James could not activate our uh, past or old version of OpenSSL now. It is activation problem. So I created a proposal for solving this problem. I hope the new syntax and the features that can place modules under the arbitrary namespace, like uh, require blah, 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 to into uh, some arbitrary namespace, uh, like uh, lib like this, so that uh, there are many problems in current CLB specification, such as shared library of native extensions or and uh, all the loaded feature variable problem. So in current status, we cannot fix this activated problem for our RubyGems and bundler dependencies. So it need to, it needs continued discussion and work. Uh, this is a list of dependency of uh, Ruby James and uh, its test suite. So these may remain as a default gem because uh, activation problem with in uh, Ruby 3. So in other words, uh, rivalries without this list of uh, bundle gems or regular Ruby James. How do you feel about this plan? in Ruby 3. So I work to promote it with the gamification project in this year and the next year and the next next year. So in short term view, so gamification solves a security vulnerability, provides a future backporting and GitHub workflow 
to Ruby users. It seems to only benefit that uh, in the long term view, so it became a complicated dependency and increasing maintenance cost to our library maintenance and uh, confusion experience to Ruby users like activation program. So we need to we need to discuss and involve a lot of use case and user interactions. If you have some concerns, please ask your idea to me. So that is summary. Uh, today I introduced our Ruby's standard library, like our default gem and bundle gems, and also specification of this library. And uh, I share the current status of the gamification project and the development plan for our Ruby 2.5 and Ruby 3. Uh, I'm Hiroshi Shibata. So I'm from Tokyo, Japan. So I'm also the executive officer and the general manager of the business process rendering office as the GMO Paperball. So GMO Paperball has many web services like uh, shared hosting and the domain registration and uh, e-commerce support and uh, other a lot of web services. So GMO Paperball sponsored uh, my travel fee and accommodation cost in uh, RubyConf 2018-17. So many of thanks to our uh, GMO Paperball. Thank you. So. <laughs> So uh, uh, it's a final slide. So it is a photo view of a developer meeting in Tokyo, Japan. So we are working and developing to, towards uh, Ruby 3 in uh, to Tokyo, Japan. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the Ruby commit arrives uh, this Ruby conf. New Orleans, so please talk to our them about our Ruby 3. So we are happy to discuss about Ruby. Thank you.